Welcome back to another Species Spotlight. Today's Species Spotlight is on aphids, which is also known as a pest. There's over 4,000 species of aphids that live in North America, and they're primarily more active in the springtime and less in the colder months. But here in the Florida Keys, we don't have too many colder months, although I'm a bit chilly right now. But so we have some active aphids in infestation on this milkweed plant. Now milkweed is the host plant for monarchs. So here we can see the aphids. They are these little yellow spots. So aphids are insects that are only one tenth of an inch long. So they're super tiny. They have a pear shaped body, which can be green, yellow, brown, black, or even transparent. They can have wings and some don't. So over here, we have a great example of a few of them with wings. Now what's super interesting is they have no need for wings as long as they have a plant source. So they only develop wings when they need to fly to another plant. Aphids also are known for their plant sucking actions. So they have these muscles in their mouth that allow them to suck juices out of the plants. So they're plant suckers and that's what they're doing on the stems and the leaves. They're eating this whole plant. They also have these things called cornicles, which are tube-like structures that release pheromones, which is a bad odor, as a defense mechanism. So it's really hard to tell because they're so tiny, but the cornicles are located on the back of their abdomens and stick out and that's what would release the bad odor. So if they think there's a predator nearby and they have lots of predators, like crab spiders, um, different insects, wasps. So when they think a predator is nearby, they will release those pheromones through the cornicles. Now they have a interesting life cycle. The typical life cycle for an aphid is egg, nymph, which is like a baby, and then an adult. But they also have this ability called parthenogenesis, which is where they can skip the mating and egg stage. And it's basically like the mom aphid can just produce little nymphs. So it's like live birth giving babies. They surpass the egg stage and they don't even mate. It's almost like they're making little clones of themselves. And that's how it can go from several aphids to the whole infestation like we see here, because they produce so quickly. Now their lives are only about one week to several months. It kind of varies. And like I said, once they take over an entire plant like we have here at the nursery, then they will develop wings and fly away to another. Now the reason that this plant hasn't been taken care of as like a pest problem at the nursery is because there's such a huge wonderful ecosystem happening here. So aphids have symbiotic relationships with certain bugs like ants and ladybug larvae. So we can see over here, there's some ladybug larvae. They look really funny, almost like purpley and orange. They don't even look anything like a ladybug. And they have a symbiotic relationship because aphids produce this excretion from their plant sucking. So what they do is they suck nutrients from the plants and they need lots of sugar because they need some form of protein so they keep sucking sugar but eventually they're going to excrete some of that sugar out which is called honeydew excretion and ladybug larvae and ants and some other bugs eat the honeydew excretion from the aphids so they have a symbiotic relationship which means like mutually beneficial because they're helping each other so the ladybugs and the ladybug larvae protect the aphids and ants Ants also protect aphids as well because they're protecting the aphids because it's their food source from the excretion of honeydew. So that's why our nursery manager has not taken care of this pest problem because there's so much else going on here. There's the ladybugs, which are good bugs. There's some ants, there's ladybug larvae, and there is even monarch caterpillars and eggs. So another interesting fact is that 
aphids can also produce soldiers, which means that they have the ability to give birth to live young, the nymphs, and the nymphs will not reach adult stage because the nymphs sole purpose in life is to protect their mother aphid. So it's interesting that these aphids have evolved so much that they know when they can produce eggs, when they just need to give live birth to nymphs, when they make soldiers, and when they produce babies with wings. So these aphids, on top of everything interesting that they do, I mentioned they produce this honeydew. Well, here on this plant, we can see some of this black stuff. That is sooty mold. And the mold is developed after the honeydew that hasn't been eaten by other bugs. So sometimes if you have plants at home, you might see the aphids, the little tiny bugs, or you might see sooty mold. You might also see a bunch of ants, which means that there probably is an aphid infestation because there's ants around eating the honeydew or there's the sooty mold that comes from the honeydew. And like I said, these guys can populate so quickly. When they do parthenogenesis, they can give live birth up to 12 times a day. So when you think about it like that, in a matter of weeks, there's thousands of aphids. But here at the nursery, we've got a great ecosystem going, so we don't wanna get rid of these pests quite yet just because we've got the ladybugs, the larvae, ants, monarchs. So if we were to control the pest situation, we risk killing the good bugs. So I hope you learned a lot about this aphid species spotlight. Don't forget to check out our Google Classroom by registering for free at keywest.garden education for more fun facts about this interesting species.